So here we are uh, for another fantastic week, and uh, Marty, you've you've the, the the pint of the black stuff poured already. All ready, all ready to go, ready for action, Justin. You know. <laughs> well, you've been waiting patiently. It, it's all about these things this week, and uh, these things are just uh, amazing. Uh, still, uh, they're, they're just copper urns. That's all they are, Marty. That's, you're quite correct, Justin. You're quite correct. But they're, they're extremely important. There's a lot of thought goes into these, um, and uh, yeah. So we'll be talking all about stills. So I mean, it, it's just a copper pot, right? Now, a, a still is really where the the base spirit comes from, and there's a lot of thought goes into a still. Uh, I'll start actually with what it's made from, the copper. Now, there's a reason they use copper. Well, there's a whole host of reasons why they use copper. Um, very early on, pot stills would have been made uh, from various things. They'd been glass, ceramic, um, metal, other metals, but they're not really as good uh, as copper for a whole host of reasons. Uh, copper's been used for a long time, but it's really only in the last probably 50 years that the actual, uh, why it's so good has, has started to be really investigated. And they're still not 100% sure as to what it actually does. It's very malleable. It's very good for uh, being shaped, very workable. It's not too expensive, and it's a fantastic conductor of heat. So those are really good attributes for it. But what it does, most importantly, is it reacts with the, 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 the base spirit. So when you get your, your wort, basically your beer that you make, you, we talked about cereals and how you make the fermentation and all that you make a beer, it goes in. But when you're boiling it up, which is essentially what you're doing. There's lots of different chemicals produced um, and lots of what are called sulfur compounds, essentially. Uh, so, so, Marty, what, what you're telling us, uh, good evening, Mark. Mark joined us already tonight. Uh, what you're actually telling us is people don't actually know why copper's so good. They, they know why, but they don't understand the chemical processes of it. What copper does, I'll give you an example. Um, there's just, and I have to write, I had to write this down just to make sure I get it right. Um, when you would be boiling that, this wort up to, to get your distillation process in action and, and going, you'll get chemicals, one of which is one called dimethyl trisulfide. Okay. Well, that sounds complicated. Yeah. Well, it's got a rotten vegetable sort of horrible taste to it. Probably something not that similar to like rotten eggs, you know. Um, which again is another sulfur sulfur compound. Copper, if you use copper, a copper still, that limits the production of this. It breaks it down, which means it doesn't come into your base spirit. Okay. They're not exactly sure how it does it because it acts as a catalyst. It doesn't actually react itself, but it speeds this up. So it limits these, lots of these horrible sort of sulfury uh, flavours that you, most people wouldn't want in them. So some stills, they like having a little bit of that left in it. And I know that sounds odd, but it's nonetheless true. Now, again, they're still not sure. There was... Um, Experiments done by the Institute of Brewing and Distilling to try and find out what way copper reacts with this, with, with, your, uh, with, with the, the, the liquid in, in the still. And what they used was they used copper salts in a, in a glass still, it was in a glass still, and that actually increased the amount of uh, dimethyl trisulfide in it. So that was copper salts. When they did the same experiment using copper wool, it reduced it. So they don't really understand how, how or why this was doing this. 
but they know that they know that copper is is the perfect uh, metal to you know, substance to use it with because they've obviously they've used porcelain and stuff before as well. So copper isn't just there to look good. Okay, it is. There's a very specific reason for it being used. When they used, they've made steel uh, stills, and steel again doesn't reduce the amount of uh, the sulfur compounds. So again, they don't know. Okay, the stills you showed are Glenmorangie stills. Those are the tallest stills in Scotland. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, and how does the height affect stuff then? How, 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 I mean, how can that possibly make any difference? Well, uh, uh, size matters, Justin. Size matters, you know. Don't, don't let anybody. <laughs> <think>. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what happens is when you boil your, your liquid, okay, distillation is basically the process of separating. Uh, chemicals from one another and what happens is you boil the liquid to it gets to uh, the dif different boiling points of the, the liquid the various liquids inside so what happens is you boil the liquid it goes up as it goes up it condenses it cools down it gets cooler so you have the top and the bottom of the still are at two very different temperatures okay now, the idea, the trick that you're wanting to do is get the alcohol over the, the top. So you have basically what's called the line arm. Okay. This is like a roller coaster, Marty. I can see it. It's on the screen there to my left, your right, or my right and your left. It depends what you're looking at. it. And, of course, if you're watching in a mirror, it's the other way around again. No. <laughs> if you're watching in a mirror. <laughs> no, that's, that's a slightly different style. That's a different – that's a – a column style, that's a continuous style. If you go back to the picture of the Glenmorangie styles, yeah. Now, you have the, this very tall neck, okay, this swan neck, as it's known. The swan neck goes up, and you get a process called refluxing. The refluxing is defined as re putting a vapor back into a solution. Um, back into your, your, your solution to continually reuse it. So boil in circumstances such that the vapour returns to stock of liquid after condensing. As it goes up, it'll cool, and some of it will lack and won't have enough energy to actually go over the top and run down into your condensers. It'll fall back down into the still, where it goes reboiled and then takes longer to go up. What happens is the longer, the taller your swan neck is, really the lighter your alcohols are going to be because it's not there's not enough energy to carry some of the other compounds that you have along with it. So what you're wanting is a base flavour um, to your, your raw spirit. And you want what happens is your alcohol carries little bits of these other chemicals. You don't want too many of them because some of them won't be particularly palatable. Others, well, you want as much flavour, but you don't want too many different chemicals. You don't want too many chemicals overpowering. So there's various ways you do it. Now, how did you discover all of this? Because... If all these stills have different lengths of neck, right, and nobody really knows what exact role copper plays in it, how do they know this makes a difference at all, whatsoever, shape or form? Why did why did they just not use steel ones or iron ones or tin ones? Because they, they find out that copper um, did have these reactions. It did take out a lot of these more pungent, vile tasting. Uh, chemicals and broke them down. They kind of have an idea of how it works. And they, they know essentially the process. They know exactly what happens as such, but they don't necessarily know the, the, the chemistry of how it actually does it because it acts as a catalyst. It doesn't really react, do the reaction itself. 
So they're not 100 sure. Can I show people, because people are are, are are tuning in for the first time tonight. Uh, J.P.L. Rorden is tuning in for the first time, and he's saying, uh, first time tuning in, heard great things. Can I show this this map here? What what yeah. on earth, what on earth uh, does this schematic mean? Because, you know, there's that bulbous neck. There's a triangular one. There's one with a feedback loop. There's one that slopes down. There's one that slopes up. What's that all yeah. about? Now, remember I said... You've got this swan neck, this tall neck. Then the bit that comes off the swan neck, right? I'm sort of dancing here, right? So this you goes. Like like you're in TikTok. You're in TikTok. Expand <laughs> in America. We'll get. We'll get axed. We'll get axed. <laughs> don't, I, I, I have enough of the Chinese spying on me. I don't need to install that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> what happens is you have these different angles of line arm. Okay. For example, so you've one going down. What happens when the, the liquid gets enough energy to go over that little point, it runs away. It won't come back. If you've one that's a little bit more elevated, it go, the spirit goes up, it cools, and starts to come back down again. A certain okay. portion. So it's all about this refluxing. It's all about copper. And it's all about the contact with the spirit contacting the copper. The more refluxing you get, pretty much the, the more um, the lighter in character the, the, the spirit will be because it'll, the, the copper will work and take away more of the, the impurities, if you like. Now, some of the impurities you want to keep, certain aldehydes and the esters and this kind of thing, that's where the flavour comes from. Remember, you're not making vodka. Vodka is basically just ethanol and water. That's pretty much all you want. Whiskey, you want to put flavours into it. You want to get your characteristic style of whiskey. So Glenmorangie with the big 16, 17 foot stills, they have a very light, approachable character. That's what they aim for. And the other hand, the likes of Macallan have very small, dumpy stills because they want to take up lots more of these um, congeners, the, the, the flavour compounds, if you like. So McCallum would be seen as having a heavier body. It's more of these, more of these impurities, really, if you want. Now, I'll give you a good example. Dunville's. And I got this this last week. Dunville's new single whiskey. Yes. Oh, this hats off to the guys down there. I know this is a bit of a cliche, me saying this, but this is fabulous stuff. It sold out in six minutes, so it's not a surprise, but it is wonderful. But Dunville's. I think you have a picture of the Dunville's still. Uh, which one's that, Marty? It's you'll see it. It's the one that's a bit grubby. I say grubby. That's not. That's maybe not the right word. What they do is they don't. They is don't it this clean. one? <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist that one. I couldn't resist that one. No, no. It, it, it's 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 the grubby one. I can't see the pictures are so small. Uh, what 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 color is it apart from copper? <laughs> <laughs> the reason they don't clean the outside of the stone, they, they they don't they don't polish it. They clean it. They I don't think polish. this is it. Yes, that's it. Mm, no, that's not it either. That's not it either. Is is this guess the still game? <laughs> Let's see if anybody listen. Jamie, Michael, Trevor, JP, James, Julie, Mark. What still is that? Answers in a postcard, please, and we'll tell you next week. Well, I'm trying to find the grubby one. I'm trying to find the grubby one. Is it the one with you in the picture? No? I th um, what did I say? I sent it over to you earlier on. I actually got Jarlath to send it up. The reason uh -huh. they don't clean, or they don't polish, I should I have to get... The place is spotless. They just the still, they don't polish it. And the reason is Graham, the, the head distiller down there, thinks that if you polish a still, it... Um, it interferes really with the heat transfer. So the still will lose more heat than he wants. He wants to keep that sort of tiny little bit of um, insulation, which probably means that there's not as much heat escaping and that there'll probably be a little bit, a tiny bit lighter in, in character. But he, he thinks this makes, this makes a significant difference. And, well, 
we'll have to wait and see. Everything else that they've been doing is fantastic, so we'll have to just wait and see what their uh, their actual own spirit comes out like. But that it's all these little differences and little changes that make huge differences to the character. Now, we've talked about water and, and we've talked about the cereals and all of that kind of thing. The still is really where you start off really putting in your own character. All the other brands of barley and all that kind of stuff, well, most people will be using the same sorts of barley. Uh, they, they talk about the, the, the various uh, different uh, locations and where it's, where it's grown. I told you before, most, most Scottish barley comes from England. Scotland just could not. Uh, that's the one. Bingo. Yeah, that's exactly it. And do you know why I couldn't find it? Because I hadn't uploaded it. That's why. <laughs> well, what, what, what you see here is you see there still, okay? And you see the way it's not polished. It's clean, but it's not polished. In the background, you'll see the, co the, the column stills, which are polished. They're spotless. But this one, the one at the front, they don't want shiny sparkling because Graham thinks um, that it interferes with the um, the heat transfer that more heat escapes coming out of it and that will have an effect on the character that they're wanting to produce all of these little things I said last week, I think it was last week when, when companies are making these new stills, for example Forsyth, Forsyth are a, a company in Scotland they make, uh, they've made stills for Long, long time. They make them for big names like uh, Glen Fiddick, Glen Grant, Glen Levitt, American companies like Woodford Reserve, Town Branch, all of these. So th this is primarily what they do. But they must do only one a year <laughs> because they last for, for centuries in many cases. But like this, in order to install some of these these stills, and from conception to actually installation and getting them working, does take about a year. These are these are not cheap. These are extremely expensive, and depending on what style of whiskey you want to make, you have to give your specifications to the company. They will then say, right, okay, we'll make whatever you want, um, and they Forsyths make um, distilleries from fifty liters all the way up to two uh, twenty five thousand liter stills. Wow. Yeah. So they are expensive there's a huge amount of thought goes into this because this is really going to be your signature style of whiskey and you need to get it right first time if you make a mistake say you want to make a, a heavy bodied um deep sort of medicinal um say lafroig you don't have a still like the glen morangy still because it's just you couldn't do it you can't it's impossible you have this very, very light character whiskey new make coming off and you're wanting something heavy and medicinal. So Lefroy stills quite small, it's quite dumpy. You know, they want that chemical character. Um, but Forsyth, again, if they make lots of stills. People make them all over. They're all pretty much handmade, I think. Basically, all have to be handmade. So you need to get it right. First time, I think, would be a good look. Now, again, size matters, as we said. Uh, <laughs> the largest, largest whiskey still in the world, Jameson's. Jameson whiskey still has a, has a still that holds, and I quote, 143,872 litres. That's a big one. <laughs> that is, uh, of course, they're... they're uh, they're they're at a big style, you know. Uh, how come it, it's not Johnny Walker's that has the, the biggest one then? Well, Johnny Walker's is a blend. Johnny Walker doesn't need to have that. Johnny okay. Walker does. They blend whiskey, so they take it from various distilleries that they, that they all own and then mix them up, essentially, as, as we talked about. Now, the smallest distillery, the smallest distillery in Scotland is in Pitlochry. Uh, Edward, well, I, I have to be correct. I have to get this right because that's not strictly true. But Edward is sort of the smallest typical distillery in Scotland. And they have two stills. Their wash still is 4,200 litres. 
and their uh, spirit still is 2,200 litres, tiny. There's only three okay. people that actually make the whiskey. There's only three people. It's fabulous stuff, and it's like a postcard. It's just an amazing little place. Right. Okay. We're about a well, third of the way through, Marty. We're about a third of the way through. There is a smaller distillery in Scotland, the Carnoustie Distillery. It's a man and his son basically have a, a 10 by 7 shed and a little distillery in it. <laughs> and they've made something like 160 bottles of, of spirit, but they don't make whiskey, so that, that doesn't really particularly count. Right? But over here, we have these guys, the Cologne Distillery. Now, Cologne, their two stills, one's called uh, Christor, which is a thousand litres, and then you've got Brock, which is Irish for badger. But I've never asked. Do people, do people give names to their stills, do they? They do indeed, Justin. Yes, it's like yeah, cars. That's like, that's, like, that's like giving a name to your todger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> What's yours called, Justin? Because <laughs> you're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy well we will get banned from america especially oh, yeah. when mike pence takes over now listen we're, we're about half a third of the way through we better say hello to some of these people tonight because <laughs> they've been they've been there was four people waiting before we even started tonight because when i <laughs> logged in i could see four people were watching before we even started right? <laughs> that, that's game uh mark kerr saying good evening good evening mark uh, Trevor Watson again in Fermanagh. I was in Fermanagh last night, yeah, at Drum Honey uh, Holiday Park. Very nice place it is too. Awesome stuff. All Excellent. right. Yes, just, I'm just, I will get to this in a little bit. You work away. Uh, Julie Mason saying hello. Uh, really looking forward to tonight and learning about stills on tonight's show. Yes, it's all about stills tonight. Remember to comment, like, and share. Uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, find us on YouTube as well. Now, uh, James Moore Doherty is saying copper stills are expensive enough when you're paying. Yes, he would yeah. know all about. He would know all about that. Um, there, there, there's this guy I was telling you about. He says first time tuning in, heard great things. Well, yes, tonight it is raining, so I, Marty, I think you have uh, reception difficulties. Do you tonight? Uh, uh you're going up and down. I think it's raining heavily where you are, is it? Yes, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about the weather. Am no, I... there isn't. No, uh, until somebody buys us a leased line about this size, you know, uh, to, to send the internet down, uh, we'll always have this problem here. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying, uh, Good evening, all evening, all to you. Uh, Trevor Watson liked the way I posed the question the last time. Good question, Justin. Yes, uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, because Obviously, Marty might assume that you know everything because you're watching the show, but the whole thing is this is a voyage of discovery about whiskey. Yeah. And we want to ask the layman's questions because I know nothing about it. You know, I have to read off my script. You see, there's my script. <laughs> see, I read off it like that there, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 Michael Masters is also saying uh, probably <laughs> happened. My script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Michael. He's going back to how they discovered about the still ship. Probably happened when they were langers and we were just mucking around. That that's that's a good that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trial uh yeah. Error, yeah. Oh, we're cut off. Uh you need to add the unique shape of hand. I don't I don't I've hinged stills in this lineup tonight, Murray. Yeah, I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing you as a back. I've been in round the hinge this time, right, and uh, they are, uh, they are, fabulous place. It's going to be. It's going to be super. They're peated. They're peated. Irish whiskey is superb. Absolutely superb. I think I've lost a connection. Unfortunately, no, you haven't. You still. We have you keep dunking in and out. No, the oh, he's he sent it to you, he sent it to us. 
Oh, I know Jarlath not hat the roof. Jarlath, Jarlath, uh, Jarlath is the guy that sent them. <laughs> so yeah. we 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 have permission for these photographs. They were actually sent in. I I uh, seen the original. Uh, it was on my email there. Let me see. Uh, Jordy Burke uh, is saying hello again uh, from. Uh, Hi in Canada once again. Thanks for tuning in from Canada. Remember to comment, like, and share all around your friends. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying about tailings, uh, the shape of tailings still. You'll maybe uh, touch on that later. Uh, Jamie Cotter saying, don't let Waterford hear you say, <laughs> you say, say that. Uh, uh, Michael Matthews is a bit worried he hasn't been there yet. I mean, it, which one's that? There's 33 uh, distilleries in Ireland now. Which one was that, Michael? You were saying, always always repeat what you say, because obviously I, I can't exactly get the exact time, and it doesn't always pop through at the exact point in the uh, conversation tonight that you will uh, comment it on, because there is a delay. And remember to comment, like, and share on the Me and Irish Whiskey Review page. Michael Matthews is saying, very expensive. Yeah, uh, uh, and Michael Matthews, it's not used anymore, I think. What what still was that? What we're talking about that's not used anymore? That's the big Jameson one. Uh, right. They, Jameson have, essentially, they've got about four distilleries on site. They have a they have their, their sort of plot styles, and then they have their continuous styles, their column styles, and then they have a micro distillery that does these experimental method and madness stuff. Um. They're a huge operation. I mean, no, there's no real competition for them at the minute in in Irish whiskey circles. There just isn't. You know, for every bottle everyone else sells, Jameson probably sell about seven bottles. You know, so well. All right. So, now, uh, what was it going to say? Uh, we've got lots of messages to get through tonight. Do you want me to rush through them before you continue on, Marty? Yes. Go yeah. Ahead. I will do. So Mark Kerr is saying Eridur is a beautiful distillery. Yes. Stunning, stunning place. Yep. Uh, Michael Matthews is, is saying, what's wrong with that? I don't know what he's saying. What's wrong with that? You need to repeat in the comments what it is because, as I said, we don't always get these messages in order or sequence. Uh, Mark Kerr has said, uh, you had to ask him, Marty. You had to ask him. Oh, yes. That's, that's about it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it, 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 it's this big. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Jimmy Connor said, uh, "Jesus, that went downhill quick." Right? Jimmy Mason is saying, uh, "Killown whiskey." Uh, J Jody Burke is saying, "Love uh, the uh, the inf." Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for that. Yes, Jordy, I've heard about you Canadians. Uh, <laughs> Trevor Watson uh, and uh, Trevor Watson said, "Does every country make their own stills, like India, Japan, USA?" That's a good question. When I come back to that one, um, okay. Waterford is saying um, that's where the still was you showed, and uh, Michael Matthews has said, "We won't put it in screen, but you can read that out in the comments." All right, that's what he calls. <laughs> that's what he calls it. So. Uh, <laughs> Marty, Marty, we're halfway through the show tonight. I want to make sure that people know uh, what we're doing tonight. This is this is what we are doing. Uh, I want you to uh, comment, like, and share on Facebook. You're watching uh, Marty McCauley and Justin McCarty. <laughs> I've been the Whiskey Review. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. The reception is that bad. I'm having to fill, Marty. You, you, you look like you're on the dark side of the moon or on the Starship Enterprise in the deepest depth of a far-off galaxy. I look dark. I'm, I'm, I'm bathed in light here, Justin. There's nothing I can do about it. I'll make, I'll make it big. You've gone all bitsy and pixelated, you see, on me. So I'll make you small, and then you look okay. That's okay. That's better, yes. Make me small. Hide my blemishes. Hide my imperfections. <laughs> now, what, what was I going to talk about? Um, right, we were talking about the shape of stills and how important the sort of shape of stills are. There's essentially two different varieties. You have a pot still, which is the little dumpy pot shape still that everybody's really familiar with. Lots of people aren't as familiar with the, the column still. Now, Column stills, most people think they were invented by a, a man called Aeneas Coffey, who he, he was a, a 
well, he was a tax inspector essentially who invented a, a column still. That's not a, that's not a column still. Column stills. Remember the diagram you showed earlier on? That's the one. Yeah. That's it. So the column still really is a continual, continuous process. Now, it's very much a lighter style of alcohol, and it strips out a lot of the, the, the congeners, the flavours that that really you would really be wanting to, to keep. But it, it, because it's able to distill continuously, you don't have to stop, clear it out, do any of that kind of business. It's a lot cheaper. Now, the way it works, essentially, you, you feed in the your what you want to distill, in at the top, and it goes down and it's made with steam coming up. Now the steam takes it up through these plates. So there's all these plates in it. And as it goes up, your whiskey or your alcohol, sorry, comes out at the top. But you can control it three different ways. You can get it sometimes to reflux back in the loop at the top. At the bottom, you have the steam coming in, so that's hot. And the, 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 there's a difference in temperature between the top and the bottom. So as it goes up, it, some of it starts to cool down, and you get this sort of again this uh, refluxing sort of mechanism. That's those can be made out of certainly parts of it can be made out of steel, because steel. The downside with using copper is they it wears out. Okay, um, it does eventually need replaced. In a column style, certain sections of it can be taken out, the plates and stuff can be taken out and, and changed. So it's better that certain sections of it are made from stainless steel. So it's, it's got that kind of steampunk look, you know, that that sort of copper and steel metallic look to it. You know, the, they have all these different levels and depending on how tall you have it, Again, it affects your, your spirit quality or flavour is probably a better way of putting it. So you'll probably find a lot of the time you have in a distillery, you'll have pot stills and column stills. Column stills, what they'll be used for is for, for blends. Um, you'll run them through and use it to blend your whiskies because it's not as flavour flavor flavoursome. Um, so people will use that to for the likes of Johnny Walker and that kind of thing. Okay. Now, okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, but it's very hard for the layman to tell the difference. I mean, if we look at that one there, is that a column still or is that a pot? Because it looks like a pot at the bottom and a column at the top. Well, this this is Balcone uh, Distillery over in Texas, over in America. Now, the reason I put that in is because it's pretty much unique in that the still goes up and then the line arm circles around the still so it's got a very very long sort of condensing tube so the way they reckon they moved premises and uh, what they had previously they couldn't fit into the new premises so what they did was they built the still where the, the, the line arm basically goes around the still rather than the, the sort of traditional angled one so I, I thought that was a, a very sort of um, unusual design, that they wanted to keep the same amount of contact with copper that they had, and so they put this in to, to compensate for the, the amount of copper uh, that, they, that they needed. Um, now, we've been asked a very good question, Marty. It says this, <laughs> if you were building this distillery just to make money, you would go for a column still. Is that because there's less wastage? Uh, you, most people who have column stills, what they do is, if they want to make money straight away, what they do is they get a column still and they make gin or vodka, that kind of thing. Um, column stills for whiskey, it strips out too much of the, the congeners. Um, it's really... You couldn't make... You could make reasonably cheap whiskey but it probably wouldn't have that great a taste. You'd need to put pot still whiskey where pot still made whiskey uh, to, to really give it the flavour. That's because it's all these different. Remember, vodka 
is basically just alcohol and water. Okay? That's essentially all it is. Whiskey, you want to have some of those, I call them impurities, because they're not, you've no real control over exactly what you're going to end up with. So, but you want those impurities to give you the flavours, all these esters that give you that lovely apple flavour, you know, like pears and that, some fruits and then you can uh, various other chemicals. You've got uh, aldehydes and, and so on that give you that sort of deep, rich uh, toffee flavours and that kind of thing. You know, you, this is where you're getting your, your base spirit to start with. And if your starting point's not good, if you're starting off with basically putting vodka into into uh, a whiskey barrel, it just will not have the same, just won't have the same flavour because you don't have it to start with. You'll you'll get something, but it'll not be the same. So that's why whiskey has to can't be above ninety four point eight percent alcohol because other than that, that becomes then basically raw spirit it just becomes uh, industrial alcohol if you like okay now there's a few different shapes of these necks how do these necks make a difference i mean there they are there i mean it there's uh yes an onion a it's plate. all to do with this refluxing it's the amount of time that the the alcohol the vapor has in contact with the copper the copper is to remove, has this reaction. Again, we're not 100% sure what it actually does, but they're, they're fairly clued up on it, but they're just not 100% sure. And if you take, say, the likes of number five, that's got a very narrow uh, base of, of the, the swan neck, and then it opens up. So all of that will come in, it'll come out. You'll, you, you'll almost be creating a sort of partial vacuum there in some ways. So that'll, that'll come out at pressure through that little hole, expand out, and then your, your vapour will have more contact with the, the copper, at which point some of it will cool down, some of it will run back down and drop down, but it may be more steam coming up through. So it's all this constant reaction. It'll have a totally different character than, say, number two. Uh, or or number four, where they go up in it comes out of these wee ball boils, where the, the, the steam will do this. Again, some of it will cool, some of it will come down, some of it will get up by more energy, and that's essentially what happens. Can, can blending not just alter the flavour in the same way that the shape of the still can? Everything alters it. Everything alters it. Most of the flavour in a whiskey comes from the casks. Okay? But if you start off with just a very bland alcohol-based spirit, raw raw spirit that comes out, it's not going to have the same. You're starting off with something poor that uh, it just um, wanted to 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 just go through uh, the process. You have to have something decent to start with. Uh, you know, just. If you don't start off on a good footing, it's kind of hard to catch up, you know? Um, okay, I'm with you. Now, if you want to ask us any questions tonight, make sure you go to the main site, Irish Risk Review, or try and find us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. It doesn't cost anything, uh, and it just means that uh, you can watch the show on YouTube. And all the old shows are archived there. They're a lot easier to find than they are on Facebook. Now, there's a close-up of the ball form, uh, the OG form. Uh, very unusual names, these. Uh, but we're getting some really good comments in tonight because there's some experts in uh, whiskey production who are commenting tonight. Uh, James Moira Doherty is saying, the real value is in pots. You can buy good grain and cask innov innovatively. There you go. You can't. They, the, if you don't start off with a good base, the casks, I'll give you an example. Um, take, we'll go with these guys. I've talked about Cologne before. I think these guys do an amazing job. They, it's, this is the, the dark rum. This was the very first one that they released. Now, this is not their own spirit. 
But what they do is they go out and they buy a quality spirit and they finish it in casks that they've bought. This is a, a Jamaican rum cask. Now, there's a picture of me when I was down in Cullowan, uh, down at, at, at in the distillery. It's a tiny little place. I mentioned them before. They have these two little stills. The type of stills that they have are they're a hybrid of ordinary stills and an alembic still. Alembic still is just, I know I'm not getting into too, too technical about a lot of this stuff. This would be sort of more common with, with uh, making cognac. But they interestingly have on there is what's called a worm tub condenser. Do you remember I said with the Balcones distillery, they have the, the coil going around to keep the contact with the, the copper? They have a worm tub condenser, which essentially is to condense the spirit as much as possible. Once it's out of the still, you want it down, you want it cooled down and then in a liquid form so that you can, you know, you can run it off and work with it. Most of them, most distilleries have like a heat exchanger. A worm tub means that it's a copper pipe that basically just circles around inside water. And in some, that keeps more contact with the copper and it takes out some more, more and more and more of the impurities. It's it's a it adds the flavour. The reason lots of people don't use them is they can be quite troublesome. It's basically a single piece of copper. If something goes wrong, you you can't replace it there and then. You, you know you have to go and get another one made. You have to get it prepared or whatever. So it becomes very expensive. So there's there really is. Um, a lot to all of this. There's lots and lots to be considered. They went for an Olympic still because for for Brendan and the guys down there, they say it's all about the flavour for them. Their they their stills a thousand liters. It's tiny. I mean, you can see just. I mean, the two big kettles essentially. They're really not big at all. So they're never going to have massive production amounts. So for them, they can have this really, really controlled, try and make it as flavoursome as possible. And that's their idea. So this isn't their own spirit. Uh, they've bought this in, and Brendan gets very, very particular about this. You're not allowed to mention, uh, by the way, on the back of this bottle, it gives you total um, transparency as to where everything's from. Now, let us all get a good look at that. Because his new one that he released this week, uh, he's been told that he's not allowed to tell you where this spirit come from by by the powers that be. This irks him somewhat. He gets very irate about this. Um, but I'll just, I'll just just in case you couldn't see, I'll just reiterate the point. That this is 75% 2009 green Irish whiskey, 5% 2008 malt Irish whiskey distilled in Northern Ireland. Okay, we'll not have to be too particular as to where that was. Uh, 20% 2008 malt Irish whiskey. Okay, so he tells you that it's distilled in County Louth and County Antrim. Now, can you narrow down where this may have come from then? <laughs> <laughs> right, I like it. Listen, we've only got about 15 minutes left tonight and we're getting some great questions in. Uh, great, great questions. Julie Mason is saying, is there a particular still shape out of the one shown for peated whiskey? That's that's a very good question. Yes. Well, what you want to do with peated whiskey, uh, again, there's there's these sort of newer Irish whiskies coming out that are fairly light, but most of them are double distilled. The vast majority of uh, peated whiskies are double distilled, which means they have, they can keep a body. The still shape, you don't want a very tall, uh, very light style of whiskey, peat it particularly, because you want that kind of heavy body. If you're going again for something, I set the, I set the Laphroaig down there for something. If you're going for something like Laphroaig, you're going to want something heavy and medicinal uh, and keep that sort of shorter, more dumpy, muscular, probably kind of uh, still. I'm saying this. There's such a wide range. People's palate, people's tastes are totally and utterly different. So, 
there's honestly it's basically how much um what character you think you could end up with but it's kind of impossible to be 100 percent sure what your spirit's going to come out like just by the shape of the still because there's all these stories about you know still has been installed guy drops a hammer puts a little dent in the still um and the whiskey's improved. So when they come to replacing the whiskey, or replacing the still, sorry, they bring it in and they ceremonially give it a little dump because they say that, I mean, it can be huge amounts of variation. So it's, some people will probably turn around and say, there's a very specific style that we want. Um, so that's what, we're going to make, but in general, it's very difficult to know what way it's going to turn out. You know? Okay. okay. Uh, another great question came in tonight uh, was uh, what percentage of column stills versus pot still liquid in the market in sales? Yeah, well, that's... Uh... You see, the thing is, column still whiskey, you... <laughs> what happens with that? It's used in blends. Primarily, that's where it's used vast majority of time. So, ninety percent of all whiskey sold is blended whiskey. It's not single malt. Okay. So, Collins Dill whiskey is probably the bulk of whiskey sold. Most blended whiskies use a, use a blend of, of um, pot still whiskey, where you follow the, the, the really good flavour, and then they thin it out. Maybe, maybe not the right word for it, but they they put the blend in because it's a lot cheaper, a lot. Uh, it's not as flavoursome, but if you have lots of blended whiskies, have say 40 percent. Well, some of them have a lot less than that. Say twenty percent uh, malted barley uh, done in a pot style. They have it. That's where your flavour is. Eighty percent is going to be your your green whiskey your, your continuous still whiskey so I'll give you an example Black Bush one of my favourite whiskies I, it's my everyday whiskey I love it it's, it's why I never have a bottle of it in the house because of the, every time I get it I just drink it <laughs> somebody's been asking uh, how many bottles do you actually have under the table because uh, they realise that the bottles are different every night and and you, you the, 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 I don't know why that's there I, I have a bottle of um, well it's potching um, and it's not as good as uh, Cologne potching Cologne potching or Eggenville I keep referring to these but they are fabulous I have another bottle there of Cologne, a bottle of Dingo. <laughs> I, have, I have a very strange bottle of blended brandy from the Philippines, which is not very nice. I, I, I think I think your uh, your your table there is like Sport Billy's bag. You can keep on bringing bottles out indefinitely. Yes, yeah. yes, you, you you certainly can. Now. Uh, some great comments tonight. We've got about 10 minutes left tonight. If you do want to pose a question, make sure you go to the main page and uh, comment, like, and share on Irish Risk Review on Facebook. Now, remember as well as that, if you want to actually uh, join the mailing list, it is posted there. Join the uh, mailing list and uh, click there, and uh, it's fully GDPR compliant, and you can send your email address and Mori eventually will get right writing something and sent it out and you can ask questions uh, on there as well too now uh, Jordy Burks asked a question when paint in the process because people mistakenly the paint is the colour of the water it's not when do they add peat they add peat when they dry out the grain when they dry out the grain if you watch the the, the one we've done on Earth, where I talk a, a, lot, a lot about various barley types and that kind of thing, it, that'll explain that. So if you go to YouTube, okay. uh, there. um, there's another type of still. I've talked about the pot still, and I've talked about the column still. Now, 
this whistle pig, this is a 12 year old rye whiskey made in uh, Vermont in the US. This is this is fantastic. It's really, really good. They use a hybrid still, where um, you have a pot still, and on the top of it, you have some columns. Now, I did send, I sent a picture over this too, Justin. Um, they are, this was designed by the, 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 the guy who uh, was the master distiller. He designed it, and he designed this as a sort of hybrid still that goes up and has lots of this uh, refluxing, and it has these plates as well. So it comes out as a sort of... Is, it, is this it that looks like a flute? No. There's one I sent. I sent it over. Uh, it's basically the, the still, and then on the top of it, you have some of these columns. And that's the balconies one. That's from below. Nope. Nope. That's me. Nope. nope. That's, nope. That's, not it. that's not it. That's not it. That's nope. not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's it. Nope. 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 That's them nope. all. You nope. sent 14 tonight. That's them all. No, nope. I sent you another one. But Whistle Pig, if, if you go on and have a look at it, they're, they're the still, uh, their still is called Mortimer. Again, another one that's named. They have, um, it was designed by their master distiller. And it's a 750 gallon uh, hybrid still. And it's, again, they've decided this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to make this. And they are all different. And it's to give, that's why whiskey's got so many different flavours and tastes. Because they're starting off, you have the grain coming in. Is it pita or unpita? Um, the different types of grain, the different mash bills. Again, <laughs> I'm bringing up Brendan again. Brendan's adamant about all the different mash bills that you bring in, what, what you make up. It then goes in, it's fermented. And what sort of the yeasts are pretty much the standard to use brewer's yeast. It then goes in to your fermenters. Some people use uh, wooden fermenters. They, try, they think that gives them this flavour straight away. All of these processes are different for each and every distillery. Then it goes into a distill, gets distilled in this different shape still. Then it goes into another distill. has to go through two distillations minimum. Not in Ireland, typically, they do three. But you go over, you have these different types of different uh, distillations. Then you go in and you put it in your uh, your barrels and casks and then you get your flavours. That's why it's so complicated. That was a good question. Where does the triple distilled come in? Is, is that to do with the plates that add an extra level to it? No. What happens with triple distilled malts is basically it's distilled three times. Now, as you can imagine, when you do your first distillation, you initially what comes off is um, your very light alcohols, your very volatile alcohols. They'll come off very quickly. Then your ethanol comes over. But your ethanol, it doesn't happen. Boom, 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 boom. Each of these things carry other things with them. So you get your cut-off points. So you cut off your, 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 your head's cut, where you take away your mess. First distillation, you don't do don't worry about that. That goes into your 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 still, you do that, then it goes over into your, your third still. If you have three distillations, you're stripping out more of these impurities. So the typical Irish uh, style of whiskey, um, something like a pot, like this pot style, this middle one, will be considered fairly light, very approachable. There'll be less of these uh, impurities. I, I don't like calling them impurities, but it's kind of what they are. They're, they're, they're not alcohol, but it's these chemicals that give whiskey its flavour and, and also your cognacs and rums and all that kind of stuff as well. It's these what's called congeners. And if you triple distill, if you distill a, a thing three times, you're kind of stripping out some of these every time. And when you trip and strip them out, it's seen as being 
you might automatically think, well, that's surely going to be less flavoursome. That's not strictly true. What it does is the ones that you keep in, depending on the shape of your stills, you just sort of concentrate on those. And you'll end up with this much more approachable, lighter. Loads of people cannot drink your Lafroy's or, or your Peter Kalila's or something like that because they just they, they don't get them. So these are double the still and they have a, a heavier body to them. And there's more of the... <sighs> They are more flavoursome. There's no two ways about it. But lots of people just don't like them. Uh, some of the, some of the other chemicals. Some people just cannot drink peanut whiskey. They just wouldn't. Right. But, okay. Okay. I hope that clears that up. I hope that sort of clears that up. Mm-hmm. Character is a better word for it. Now, uh, Loch Lomond in Scotland have hybrids uh, at two point five x distilled. There you go. Yeah. More so, so not only we have we've single, double, and triple, we've two and a half times distilled. I like that. More than like, more like the, I think it's two point seven four times because they, <laughs> there's a bit of it they take put it back in and redistill that. And, but that, this is it. It's so complicated that the still is one factor in it. But it's really where, if you like, you get your sort of base character of your your uh, your spirit, your mash bills. You know what. What you're putting in may vary, may change slightly, especially in Irish whiskey, where uh, you, you can have a bit of peat it and uh, you know unmalted barley and malted barley, and that's, that's described then as pot full whiskey and so on. But you're still, you're not going to change your stills. Your stills are pretty much your character, and that's what gives your um, your whiskey essentially its uniqueness. Now. This this, is this this is real character. This is real character. This this looks like a gas canister. It probably is. This is people whenever they say about poaching. Now I had a bottle there. This this I was given by by a guy right, um, a number of years ago. This is poaching, and you'll hear people talking about oh, it's the good stuff and all this here. It's crap. It's awful. It's made in something like that, right? Now, to try and compare something like that to any of these professionally made <laughs> distillery stuff, it's just there are some people out there making whiskey at home, making spirit at home, and it's probably not too bad. Okay? But it's a bit like someone who's a keen amateur uh, boxer trying to take on Floyd Mayweather. And in whiskey circles, that would be Conor McGregor taking on Floyd Mayweather. It was a joke. <laughs> the whole thing was a joke. And he got his head punched in, as everybody. And it's gonna uh, <laughs> Floyd, Floyd Mayweather could have finished that fight in about 15 seconds, but he dragged it out just for just because he could. He was in absolutely no danger. But that's that, don't compare professional stuff with amateur stuff. It's just ridiculous. Um to, if anybody, by the way, did want to make their own whiskey, do your homework, okay? There are companies out there that you can go into um, various places, but there's one not too far away from here called Getter Brewed, and they sell um, like home distillation kits. They're not that big. They're you know, maybe about 20 litres. If you're ever tempted to buy one of these, make sure and do your homework, because if you don't do it right, you will kill yourself, and that's not a good way to enjoy a drink. Okay? So... If you're ever tempted to buy one of these, or and it, it's perfectly legal to do, as long as you don't sell it, you know you can go and buy this stuff. But do your homework. Don't don't poison blind or kill anybody because that's not a good idea. Okay. All right. Well, that's about it for tonight. Some great uh, comments in tonight. We have uh, Frank Hearn saying, "I've learned so much in the past few weeks." about what I've been drinking for years. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, let me see. Michael Matthews is saying, uh, we used to uh, on the dog when he pulled a muscle. Best place for
for it. He could <laughs> run. He could never run too well. Uh, Jody Burke saying, uh, "Thanks, guys, for very informative. Good night from Prince Edward Island, Canada. Watch out for the blackbirds. I always see them on TV on Discovery Channel." <laughs> and uh, Killowan uh, Potching is really good stuff. It is lovely stuff. It's a proper stuff. Stick stick to the safe stuff. And uh, Michael Matthews is saying uh, Dingle is very good at showing you how it works. Uh, keep very simple uh, for all there to see. And uh, what else have we got time for tonight? Uh, somebody else was saying Nick Soar was saying. Uh, they're coming that fast, I can hardly keep up with them already. Nick Soar was saying, uh, super evening, Marty. They're coming in like, <laughs> I, I wish you'd oh, say, say, I can't keep up with them. Uh, Patrick Mulkey is saying, uh, thanks very much, guys. Another great evening. Uh, thank you very much. That's about it for tonight. Uh, right. we'll, 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 we're go what we're going to do is next week, we are going to hopefully, I have to just get it all confirmed, have a whiskey tasting from. The, the wonderful Silky, who James is on here. I was talking to James during the week, and we will do the same as we've done before, get 20 people picked out of the, the comment, like, and shares, and all that kind of guys. And there's a few regulars who I've sent stuff. I got stuff sent out to, and I got lost in post and stuff, and that kind of thing. Um, so there'll be 20 people picked from this. Uh, we'll get a, a sample sent out, and we'll do a whiskey taste next week. Won't do. That's what I like to hear, Marty. We'll, we'll leave it there while the signal is good tonight. What do you think of our ending credits? What do you see this? <laughs> this is new to me. Do you like them? They're brilliant. They're brilliant. I, I don't know. Do you not like them? They're very really good. They're fantastic. Could you pull me off? Here we go. Look at that. You love it.